Hello and welcome back to Here We Tow. In this vlog we're going to talk about motorhome versus camper van. It might be that right now you are trying to make the decision between which way to go. Do you want a motorhome? Do you want a camper? It might be that you've got one and you're thinking of the other, you've got nothing at all, you've got a caravan and you've got a decision to make. So what do you need to know? Well we started with a caravan as you know and back then I would never ever ever I thought I'd have a motorhome. Well, I still technically don't right now, but I never thought I would. Jules, however, you always liked campers, didn't you? I was the other side, so I've always, always wanted to try the camper. The, like the VW Dream, you know, looking out over the sea, surfing activities, that's always appealed to me because from an old, I, I was a tenter, so it uh, it doesn't really bother me sort of the the size of things and things like that so yeah that's yeah. that was so, my that was my that was my dream and after we sold our caravan we actually had a loan of um, a 6 meter long motorhome which was really quite interesting because what we found with that was a 6 meter motorhome was very agile really wasn't it yeah. but i'll come to that then we sold that no sorry then we handed that back and then we ordered our own motorhome um, and while we waited for that we bought a used motorhome now that motorhome was 7.4 meters long when ours arrived our um, compact dl was seven meters long and now we're currently touring in a seven and a half meter long uh, motorhome we did have a fantastic opportunity just a couple of months ago to actually test a vw camper didn't we yep and that was about five metres long. So we are able to make a comparison now from motorhomes to camper vans. And hopefully this will just give you our insight, having used both. Now, a motorhome, basically motorhomes are going to be based on a cab and a chassis. The cab is generally going to be Fiat, Ford, Peugeot, Mercedes, Benz. Those are the standard ones you're going to find a motorhome is going to be built on. They take the cab, they take the chassis and they build the motorhome onto it, whichever manufacturer it is. The camper vans, camper vans quite often are the VW, which is the iconic one. Ford, they're a popular one now. Vauxhall, those are sort of generally the most popular campers. And I'm not talking about a van conversion like the Adria Twin, for example. I'm talking about a proper camper van. And the campers are a conversion within the actual van itself so those are the differences so let's just talk now about the practicalities because the things you got to think about with a motorhome what we found is a six meter motorhome we could park it in a normal car parking space it was really agile not a problem at all we could get it on the driveway not a problem um and it was easy once we went up above six meters a six meter van no matter what it is you're going to find it more difficult to park and that's what we found haven't we yeah. just on a side note on that um we found as well it's not only the length it's the height because there's a yeah. lot of height barriers so that that was something that you know it, it, even though we were going shorter we still had the height and yeah. it still restricted us to, to some degree which obviously the camper doesn't yeah and interestingly a lot of car parks now you'll notice have installed height barriers and that's to keep motorhomes out that that's the idea um, because once you go longer, you do need two bays. Like now, unless we've got a bay with a really good overhang at the back, yeah. we have to pay for two parking spaces in a car park. Now, with a camper, what we found is that it was just like a car, isn't it? It's like a long car, five metre long camper. We had no problems parking it. You didn't even think about it. There was no planning. There's more planning with a motorhome. And it's the same when you're at home, isn't it? This This is a big motorhome. Thankfully, we can get this on our drive at home. You might not be able to, so then you've got to think about storage. A camper, no problem, on the driveway. The other thing to think about is you can use a camper for every day, can't you? Yeah, every day. Every it day can be vehicle. a second vehicle. Yeah, you can. Or your main vehicle, your only vehicle. Yeah. You, you can use that commuting to and from work, or you can mm. use it just in your daily nip into the shops. Yeah. yeah that, and uh, you can use it even as a tow. If you've got a caravan or you still want to go keep caravanning or tow a trailer, it's a practical tow vehicle. The motorhome, you're going to have to think about keeping it at home. It's not an everyday vehicle. You're not you're not going to use this every day. You could if you want. Personally, I wouldn't. Um, 
and also you're not just going to be heading off with a caravan attached to the back of it that's it's a totally different leisure vehicle so what you can and can't do with it and what you've got to look at as well is at home if you're wanting to store um a motorhome at home you have to see if there's any covenants on your property that say no motor caravans because that's what this is a motor caravan the camper van it's not it's not that and you would be able to use that and uh, store it at home so that's actually another another good um point there now when you're doing your research so that's basically the first thing you've got to think about when you're doing your research you can watch vlogs like this on youtube which is a great place always start with youtube but the second place you can look are publications so magazines um papers articles things like that now one thing we've talked about before is the readly app we've been using this for a while now readly the readly app there is a description in the link below and um in the pinned comment that app basically you download it to your device and it gives you access to thousands of magazines and publications within that app there are camper van magazines there are motorhome magazines there are van conversion magazines caravan magazine you name it there is a magazine believe me for for you to research and those are quite valuable yeah absolutely and not only that with the app obviously it's weight saving so be it in a tent a camper van uh, a a motorhome, a caravan, you've got space for all your favourite magazines that obviously mm. you have downloaded and you've chosen to yourself. And just so I can show you, um, on, on my Readly app, it, uh, it obviously even shows that all the bits that I've picked and I want. So obviously you can have favourites, you can get in there, you can get your latest subscriptions. Once it's downloaded to your device, that is iOS or Android or whatever device you've got, iPad or tablets, um, once it's downloaded to there, it's in your device. So even if you're off grid, got no connectivity, you're right in the middle of nowhere, which inevitably we find ourselves in places when we are camping or using our, our desired um, motorhome, campervan, caravan or units of our choice, we, we don't have much yeah. signal. We're so basically, the Readly app, you can download your publications, you can basically flick through them whether you've uh, got Wi-Fi or you haven't got Wi-Fi. It's going to save you weight. It's going to save you payload, space. You can get, with the link below, two months free and you can cancel at any time. I really do recommend you have a look because that's how we started with it yeah. and we still have it. So two months free and you can cancel any time. If you don't like it, it's not going to cost you anything. And there's some really valuable resources within that. So do some research. Don't just don't just listen to one set of YouTubers. Read what experts within those publications are saying, and you'll get inspirations for tours, trips, e-bikes, cooking. You name it, you you will find something of interest in there. So yeah, the Readly app that that's down there. Now one thing talking about storage and payload. Now this is where we found something really interesting with the motorhome versus the camper van. So. We've got a big motorhome, seven and a half metres long. We've got a huge tower fridge freezer. We've got an oven and grill. We've got a hob. We've got wardrobes. We've got cupboards. We've got a great big island bed. We've got a toilet. We've got a shower. We've got it all going on. We now have 4,000 kilos of weight. We've gone up to a four tonne weight on our motorhome. Okay, we've got a massive garage. Oh, we've got it all. That is the benefit of a motorhome. Let me just summarise. The benefit is... If you want space, you want storage, you want a motorhome. And that is honestly what we found, didn't we? Yeah. Um, when we took the camper van away, Jules was so excited to try it and I was open-minded about it. And I know a camper's not a motorhome and that is something you really have to get into your mind. But we struggled, didn't we? We did struggle with that sort of lack of space because you've gone to five metres all of a sudden, we were really trying to be creative as well with the space to work out how it would work. I'm, I'm, I'm a big guy. I'm a big guy. <laughs> I take up a lot of space just on my own. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it the, the bubble was burst a little bit for me. And, and maybe I was using it wrong or whatever, but I've tried, I've tried so mm. many different ways. And do you know what? We're, we are always really open-minded to everything we do. And we were very open-minded to it and the fact it is a camper and it was perfect if you want to go for a, a couple of days on a site and the weather's lovely and you can sit out and you've only got a little bit because you do have a fridge although it is a smaller one 
um, you've got a smaller fridge. We did have a little oven in there. Yeah. And we had a hob, but we we did find it, it was claustrophobic. To be honest, it was quite claustrophobic. I thought. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I, I don't struggle with space in that respect. I like the little den feel, climbing up yeah. into the top and and then having below. So it it just I, I wouldn't say claustrophobic for me. I'd say it was restrictive. Yeah. Um, and I was trying to think of it because we did have beautiful weather. Yeah. If the weather would have been bad, mm. then without you know adding a lot to it, drive away awnings or canopies and basically increasing the space, then we'd have struggled to yeah. keep dry and and have a nice. Yeah. Nice time with, and with be, the English weather. There'll be other people watching now in the comments and us sort of giving it thumbs down, saying, "Oh well, but you know we love ours." And totally, that that is totally right. And what we are doing is we're just saying how we found it as caravanners and motorhomers, the comparison between the two. So if you're, it depends how you want to tour. If you do like to relax and have that fixed bed or a drop down bed, then to go to something smaller. That was a massive compromise, and we always talk about compromises. And again, we didn't have an onboard toilet. Now I appreciate you can get your porta potty, and we talked about that. Um, now on a night, I if I I mean to fair, I don't get up. I'm not I'm not at that age where I get up for the loo in the night. But if I wanted to get up or first thing in the morning, I've got my shower, which we went cycling, didn't yeah. we recently? And I got absolutely blabbered. And the first thing I did was dive into the shower. Um, and on the motorhome, I've got that facility. On the camper, we have no facility for that. And do I want to start erecting a pop-up tent with a toilet in it and a shower? I'll be honest, I don't. That is not, not where I'm at in my life. So I did find that there was a compromise there. And once the bed was out, the floor space for this porta potty had we have had one, it was quite small. And I'd have had to have a little wee in front of Jules. Um, I think the thing I is, is done. If, if, if we'd have gone... If we'd have done it the other way around and maybe gone from like a tent to a camper van, then to a caravan to a motorhome, it yeah. might be different because yeah. you're, you're growing and gradually. Mm -hmm. Whereas we've gone from something bigger, we went from an we had, eight foot we had wide a huge caravan, caravan, yeah, we did, um, yeah. then to um, a smaller motorhome, and then you know to to what we've got, yeah, and then to a camper van, maybe maybe that. I mm. don't know. Let us know your thoughts in yeah. the description below in the comments. Let but, us know what what you think. Cause I'm sure there's going to be a a controversial sort of tale as to what we've found. And we're and just talking from personal experience and, and please add your personal experience because it's useful for, because it might be some people have had a huge motorhome and then just realised that that wasn't for them and they went camper. But, and I know you can now get layouts on the campers with um, the toilets actually fixed within yeah. them. If I was looking at a camper van layout, the things I would definitely want would be a fixed toilet that would that I discovered that was incredibly important to me and like the site we're on right now they haven't got any shower or toilet facilities and it, like I say I'm I don't particularly want a porta potty and I don't want a, a, a an erected um tent with a shower and toilet in it that's but that's the, not where I'm there at are, there are slight caveats to that as well because like for example the nugget you can have the tailgate that opens up with a, a zip around, around yeah. sort of screen yeah. which does sometimes have a hot and cold shower mm. just so that you can shower onto the ground. So th there are there are this units is, for yeah, and what? that's where it comes down to doing research, uh, research Absolutely. the layouts because there are like different. There's so many camper van conversion companies as well. So again, do your research. Like I say about the Readly app, get the magazines there, uh, flick through the magazines. There's so many different publications on camper vanning and motorhoming, and they'll explain all the layouts and all the different manufacturers that do different things. And it's really important to spend time and go to the shows because yeah. we've got the October show coming up, yeah. obviously in October. Um, so if you're at the point of making some decisions, go to the show, take your time, have a couple of days. Don't be drawn in by, like I am, when I see something bling and I run at it like a five-year-old and I'm like, yeah, let me at it. Just take it slow, step back and think about the things we're talking about. Yeah. Think about the genuine practicalities because... Although motorhomes, yeah, starting prices now for new product, we're looking at sort of 60,000 plus. Camper vans, realistically, you're looking at 50,000 plus. So we're not talking a massive financial difference in terms of your layout. So take your time. Um, and when we talk about accessories like awnings and all this, there's so much that you can start adding 
And sometimes you actually overcomplicate it. And we've been guilty of that in yeah. the past, haven't we? We have totally overcomplicated what we've been doing. Spending more time putting things up yeah. than you actually are on holiday. Yeah, and you yeah. don't need to do it. All we do now with the motorhome is we've got a canopy and that's where it ends. So really think, like if you get a camper van and you've got the drive away awning and all the rest of it, you're starting to build onto your units and sometimes you've made it more difficult than it needs to be. The other thing that I'd add at this point as well is really have a think about how you want to holiday. Mm. How are you going to use whatever you have, be it um, you know a, a, a pop-top tent, um, a camper van, a motorhome, however you're going to use it, think about that if you're going to be going to a place surfing just popping out for the day using facilities on sites then a camper van would mm. be you know the ideal thing parking in the car parks jumping out and just using it as a as a bit of a base um you know so totally 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 think about yeah. where you're going to be going how you're going to be traveling if you're going to be jumping in and, and, and zipping off here there and everywhere every day and if you're going to certain places like i can give cornwall as an example you know, smaller, tighter streets, you know, that you, you, you're going to want. Devon as well, parts yeah, of Devon. Yeah, absolutely, you right, know. Yeah. Think, Certain think places. Think about where you're going, yeah. how you're going to be using it, yeah. if you can forward think that much, uh, rather than just chucking your bag in the, in the back of whatever it is and, and zipping off. Uh, definitely, definitely uh, give it some thought. And also, last but not least, is if you are buying a camper, make sure you've got a diesel heating system, because what we discovered with the gas system was... One, we ran out of gas and we were very, very cold, um, weren't we? To be honest, very cold. That system, a gas system, same with a motorhome, if you want to run your air-blown heating off gas, you will very quickly um, use your gas, very quickly. And in the cold, the motorhome is, is much better insulated than a camper. Yeah. So if you're getting a camper, my advice from my very limited experience is make sure it runs off diesel on the heating. That was really important. So I think what we can say is motorhomes are great if you want the extra space. You'd like even say the bigger garage. Um, you're quite happy to plan parking when you get somewhere. You're more likely to leave the motorhome on site and go via foot, public transport or e-bikes, which is what we do a lot of the time. Yeah. If you want something that's easy to park at home, you could use it as a second vehicle. You don't have to think about your logistics and you're willing to compromise on internal space, then yeah, a camper van could well be suitable for you. I think what we both say is if you are uncertain, hire. Try before hire, you buy. Try before you buy. Absolutely. I'm not going to promote any um, hire company in this vlog. What I would say is there are a lot of companies that do hire of camper vans and motorhomes. And if you want to if you want details of those and my recommendations, you can get in touch with me and I will make you a recommendation. I would definitely do that because if you get it wrong, it's going to cost you a lot of money to work out you've got it totally wrong. And I think there's been times where we've worked out from what we've bought, what we like and what we don't like. And it's only now we're probably yeah. at a point where we know exactly what we would buy and what we wouldn't. Absolutely. Um, and it's absolutely personal and that's through choice. our trial and error. It is, yeah. We've, so, made, we've made the mistakes, so, you know. Get the unit as close to the layout or whatever yeah. you think that you want. Have it for a couple of nights. Go somewhere local or go as far afield as you want yeah. and try, try it. Try it. Definitely try yeah. it. And, and then, then, yeah, that'll that'll give yeah. you the that'll the make idea. you decide motorhome versus camper van. So that is literally, as I say, we're not going into the massive ins and outs of it all. We're talking about our personal experience, so it might give you um, a bit of a, an idea about what we found and help you in your decision. Um, so yeah. Don't forget, two months free, cancel any time on the Readly app down there. It is a fantastic app that we have been using for a couple of years, a few now, years now. So, yeah, um, but do your research um, and hopefully, yeah, it's given you a bit of an insight into how we view um, the touring and what we do. Questions, comments down below. We'll wait for a barrage, but we don't <laughs> mind. We're just being honest and that's what it's about. Be honest with people. You know, I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm not selling you a motorhome or a camper van. That's what we always say. I'm just trying to help give, you so you don't make a massive financial give you, error. Give you the tools you need the to tools. make your, your decision. Yeah, we're a proper pair of tools. Right. And on that note, I think we're done, aren't we? Absolutely. So as always, thanks for watching and, and we'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys.